All right, how's everyone doing today? It's your boy Airboy, and I am back with another Fanboy Aaron review. It has been a good while since I've been able to do one of these. And hopefully it won't be the last time I get to do one of these. I'm not going to go over why I'm saying that. Just uh, take that with a grain of salt. Freaking government. Anyway, today, to celebrate my comeback, and uh, I know... It, quality wise it's only slightly better I mean it's not still I don't I still don't have an actual camera I'm still using a cell phone but it's a new phone slightly better camera I'm working with what I got say what you will I don't care anyway to celebrate my comeback we're gonna take a look at the Lego Bionicle Toa Inika Inika is it Inika or Inika I'm, I'm gonna say Inika I probably got that wrong but I don't care anyway the blue one, Toa Hali, is set number 8728 with approximately 46 pieces. The white one, Matoro, set number 8736 with approximately 46 pieces. The gunmetal and yellow one, Huki, set number 8730 with a part count of a whopping 62, the majority of that being his chain. Let's see, the red one, Jaller, set number 8727, of approximately 46 pieces. The green one, Kongu, set number 8731, with again 46 pieces. And the last one, Naparu, set number 8729, with approximately 54 pieces. Now, these guys were revolutionary in the Bionicle line. They came out in 2006, and uh, that was the year that they officially did away with the gear functions that older Bionicle fans were such big fans of, and that Bionicle was so well-renowned for, instead swapping out mainly for weapon gimmicks and posability. Which I did not mind. Personally, if I have to choose between a gear function or more posability, I'm going to go with more posability. And yeah, they they really did it. Now, this particular design for Toa characters would be the basic design used from here on out. And a lot of people among the Bionicle community were not very happy about this. But we're looking at this from the point of view from the point it was released. So, we're looking at it as if it's new. So, that said, let's talk about... We're going to talk about the negative things and... Then the positive, so we can end the video on the positive. But first, I'm going to go over a little story information. Uh, back in the old days, like 2001 through 2000... Uh, well, they were mostly relevant in 2001 through 2000... Uh, was it four or three? No, 2003, yeah. They used to be Matoran through the 2001-2003 story. You know, the little villager guys. And, uh... They they were interesting characters back then, but then their protectors were sent to an island, and they failed. So they decided to try to pick up the slack and see if they can't deal with the problem themselves. And on their way there, they become Toa themselves, and they have to fight the evil Paraka and get the Mask of Life to save their god from dying. Great story. 2006 easily had some of the best sets, as well as the best story, in my opinion, anyway. At least the second best story. I mean, story-wise, I lean a little more toward 2008, but 2006 definitely takes it away as far as sets. Now, um, anyway, negatives, negatives. Uh, some downsides about the sets, um, they are basically clone sets. What does that mean? Well, they all use the same general design. As you can tell when I was going over the basic information, a lot of them had the same number of pieces. That's because they all use the same basic design. They all do the same basic things. Uh, they have different colors, different molded parts, different masks. However, overall, they are the same figure. You buy one, you pretty much have them all. The minor exception... Oh, sorry. The one exception to this might be Naparu, the black one, if only because he comes with both a primary weapon and a secondary weapon, his claws. 
And that's something I do like. So, yeah. You buy one, you pretty much have them all, exception being Naparu. So if you had to get just one, get Naparu, because he's a little more unique. Naparu being the black one. See, another negative about the set is they all use the same headpiece with the same eye color, and that's a real downside. You know, we're going to take a quick look at that. Pop his head off. You see, uh, unlike previous Toa sets, they do not use plastic masks. These guys use masks made of a soft, rubbery material. Because, And that kind of plays into the story for that year because their masks were actually living, organic things for some reason. I don't remember the details. I'm going to have to look into that. But yeah, their masks are alive and fleshy, so to work that into the figures, they made the mask soft and fleshy using a rubber material instead of plastic. And I... I think it worked out. Anyway, here's the headpiece. Yeah, they all have the same headpiece. I mean, it would have been nice if they did at least three, or did two different colors, maybe green and blue, but they all have this general headpiece, unfortunately. So they all have green eyes. Plug his head back on there. All right, another negative about the sets. Um... What is another negative about this? I mean, it's hard to think of them because, personally, I love these guys. I see uh, negatives and negatives. Um, oh, they, as you probably saw when I removed their heads, they hardly have a neck. Their neck is just a stick. It's uh, kind of pathetic from certain angles. Kind of sad. All right, uh, another negative about the set, uh, and it doesn't really affect... Holly and Matoro as much because they have blue in their color schemes, but if you look closely, they do, some of them do have these color-breaking blue pins. Now, every they all have, as far as I can tell, each of them has just one of these pins, but they are a bit of an eyesore on, set, on sets that do not utilize a blue coloration in their color schemes. Now, Holly and Matoro do not suffer it suffer from that problem because they both have blue in their color schemes, but everyone else, yeah, that's a big problem. All right. Now, uh, positive things about the set. They all look good together. They look like they are part of a team, as they are meant to be. They are a full team. Another positive, with the exception of the one color-breaking blue pin in these guys, specifically... They all have very nice, very consistent color schemes. I mean, granted, the blue pin and the green eyes might break it up here or there, but overall, they all look good as far as their colors go. And they all offer a bunch of awesome pieces, perfect for Marcus. And granted, they do reuse some of the older pieces, such as Vaki limbs and uh, Toa Metru limbs. But they also feature plenty of new pieces, such as the armor pieces. And they also did it so it's kind of a opposite from each other. Like um, uh, Kungu, Jaller, and Holly both use the same general chest plate design. Whereas Mat that's uh, pointed at the bottom. Whereas Matoro, Huki, and uh, Naparu all use a more rounded out chest plate. Uh, well, let me get one of them over here so you can see it. <sighs> there you go. So, yeah, that's something interesting. Oh, the same, they have the same deal going on with their feet, too. Uh, let's see, Jaller, Huki, and Mataro use these pointed toe claw feet, whereas Holly, Kongu, and Naparu have rounded off feet. So, yeah, they have intricate designs. Very nice detailing, beautiful color schemes that are consistent for the most part. And another positive, which I have a set of their negatives as their own, I'll go on to it, are their weapon gimmicks. Now to show this off, I'm going to have to kill the light here for a second. Oh, hold on a sec. Uh, God, I'll, just, I'll just turn it away. That makes it easier. I'll turn off the light on the camera too. And, uh, why is it so bright? 
Why is it so fuzzy? I don't... Yeah, it'll be fine. I'm turning it off anyway. Turn off the flash. All right. Another positive. And no, they all have it. I'm just going to show it up. They all have this gimmick. I'm just going to do it with the front three here because I can actually reach them. I need to get a better table. Anyway, for positive, another positive, the weapon gimmick. They have the, they have light up weapons. Isn't that something? Now, um, if I recall correctly, Huki, Naparu, or uh, Naparu and Huki have red lights in their weapons. Kungu and Matoro have blue lights. Hali and Jaller have green lights. Alright, and since you saw... I'm going to show it one more time. These three. One. Two. Three. Yeah. That's a big positive, I think. i to turn the lights back on. Hopefully it'll fix the picture in the process. There we go. That looks better. Be a little too bright. I'm gonna... There we go. Yeah, that looks better. All right. Another positive. Like their rivals, the Paraka, they have the Zammer Spear Launchers. However, unlike the Paraka, who can only fire one Zammer Spear, these guys have a little clip add-on on their Zammer Spear Launchers that allow them to shoot up to four. Now, to demonstrate this, I'm going to use Hookie. I'm going to move them out of the way. Now, when they now when the Toa came out, they each came with a set of Zammer Spears. Jaller and Holly came with green. Jaller had this slightly palish this focus. There we go. Had the slightly palish green color for his amber sphere. Then Holly had like a darker, shinierish gray or er, green for hers. Hoki and Naparu had orange and yellow Zammer spheres. See how that looked. And Matoro and Kangu had blue Zammer spheres. Now, I do not recall... Now, each Zammer Spear has a different ability. When you fire it, it does something unique. I don't recall what they are. If I remember right, the blue one steals the powers from your enemies. And the yellow one returns it. I don't remember too well. Anyway, I'm going to show you how the Zammer Spear Launcher works. It works just like the Paraka one. I did a review of them a long time ago. You simply load up the Zammer Spear Launcher... Like so. And back here you see this little triggering mechanism. Simple and easy to use. You, you take two, your two index fingers, put them here. Your thumb on the back here. And then you just... Just like that. Now each set comes with four Xamar Spears and they can be easy to lose. So... You know, try not to lose them. Now that I went over the weapons and their gimmicks, let's talk about the bad things about said items. Now, due to the fact... Now, they use batteries. Little, tiny watch batteries. I don't know what kind of batteries. So, you do not want to get them wet, and you might have to change out the batteries if you use the light-up feature consistently. And that can be a downside for these light-up weapons. And the downside for the Xamar Spear Launcher, like the Paraka Xamar Spear Launcher, I mean, it will hold, but you hold it at the wrong angle, it'll fall out. And it's even worse for these, because the clip, the way it's molded, makes the top Xamar Spear a little more loose. So if you shake it around too much, yep, there you go, you just lost the Xamar Spear. And I might have actually just lost one. Shit. Okay. So yeah, that's the main downside for the weapons. I don't want to end this video on it. I don't want to end the review on a downside of these guys. Let's talk about another positive. Um, yep, character-wise, um, 
they are all very great characters, and story-wise, they all have awesome mask powers. Hookie here, he has the mask of accuracy. Holly, she has the mask of, um, I don't remember what it's called, but basically grants her force sense. I don't know what it's called. Matoro, he has the mask of spirit, which allows his soul to separate from his body and float around. Main catch being, he leaves his body completely vulnerable when he does this. Kangu has the mask of mind reading. Jaller has the mask of fate, which I don't know why they call it that. They should have called it the mask of agility because if I remember correctly, it just allows him to jump around and flip easier. Like basically, it makes him Neo from the Matrix. And Naparu, for some strange reason, has the Mask of Flight. Now, when I looked at this for the first time, I did not take this as a Mask of Flight. Not in the slightest. Alright, so uh, give me a second. I'm going to set them all back up. Alright, sorry about that. Alright, I got them all set up. Before we close up, I'm going to do some size comparisons. Here he is next to another set from 2006. I believe I looked at, I think I reviewed this guy already. I don't know. Here he is next to Axon from the same year. Uh, yeah, Axon isn't the biggest Bionicle Titan. So yeah, they're about the same height as Axon. Just so you have a sense of how he scales with a older Tova. Here he is next to Tahu. Yeah, before 2006, this guy was short enough to ride on this guy's back. My, how the tables have turned at that point in the story, anyway. Eventually, he catches up in height. Alright, just so you have a sense of how he scales with a, a newer Bionicle set, here he is next to 2015 Tahu Master of Fire. And yeah, Tahu's generally... They're, they're generally the same size as a... 2015, 2016 set. I would show off a 2016 set, but I lost track of that thing. Alright, and just so you get a sense of how they scale with different figures, here he is next to the Transformer Siege smoke screen. Or not smoke, uh, blue streak, sorry. And yeah, a little shorter, a little taller, about twice the height as your average deluxe class Transformer. I might be looking at this guy next. Maybe. I don't know. Here he is next to a NECA Predator figure that I looked at a long time ago. And yeah, he's, they're just a hair taller than a NECA figure. The Predator, anyway. And now, the main event. I'm going to do a size comparison. Each Toa, one at a time, with their respective Paraka. Alright, here is Jaller next to Hakan. As you can see, they look like perfect rivals. Alright, here is Redak with Naparu. As you can plainly see, the Toa Inika are just slightly taller than the Paraka. Here is Hookie with Avok. Hali with Vizok. Matoro with Thok. And finally, Kongu with Zaktan. And there you have it. This has been the Lego Bionicle Toa Inaika. Now, as they stand, they are approximately... Where the heck is my tape measure? I can never keep track of that damn thing. Where... Yeah, I will be right back. Alright, sorry about the bad cut there. Anyway, as they stand, they're about... I'm going to measure Congo because they stand up basically straight. They stand about... Eight and a half, nine inches, and at the time they were released, they were about somewhere between ten and fifteen bucks a piece. Now, what I recommend getting them today if you can find them for a decent price. 
Yes, I most certainly would. These guys are easily among the best sets released by LEGO, especially in the original Bionicle line. And honestly, they're just really good figures. I mean, if you can find all of them for a decent price, like let's say 60 to $70 for all of them, I would recommend picking them up. However you have to pick, if you had to pick between one or two, I would personally recommend either Naparu if you want one that's a little more unique, or Jaller if you want the basic design that still looks pretty decent. Anyway, this has been the Lego Bionicle Toa Inaika, and uh, man, it is good to be back reviewing, and uh, join me next time when I go over the Transformers Siege Blue Streak and Barricade. And until then, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.